I've got a bad control board on a miner. Basically, if your mining rig doesn't work anymore and you can't access it, you probably have a bad control board. Uh, these are purpose-built machines, right? And so in this uh, miner right here, we've got three hash boards. Then we have a control board on top, and then we have the attached power supply. And I cannot access this miner, so that probably means the control board bad. Today I'm going to show you how to quickly, easily change a control board, how to figure out what control board you would need, and uh, well, that, that's it. It's, pr it's pretty simple. Anybody can do this, so don't be intimidated by this prepare. Yo, my name is Bosk. You're on the Bosk One YouTube channel, and I'm reporting to you live from the Bosk One Immersion Mining Shed, which is also serving as a field repair office right now. There's a few different types of control boards. You'll need to look at your miner and see which one that it uses. You also may see something like BB on the top of it, which means beagle bone. If you have a beagle bone control board, well, then you have a beagle bone control board. You just need to make sure you get the right model. Huge thanks to Altair Tech for one, offering quick shipping, good prices, really arguably the best in the industry for uh, ant miner parts and stocking just all the stuff you need, especially for Bitcoin miners. I wish they would carry all coin miner parts as well, but hey, maybe one day, right? Which, by the way, we've had such a good experience with Avril and his company, Altair, that we opened up an affiliate account with them. And even more importantly, we've got a discount code for you. So punch in the code BOSSCOIN to save some coin if you grab any parts from them. I really appreciate it when you guys use our link because it supports the channel and keeps this content rolling. We look at this, this is going to be a Xilinx board. The Xilinx board, which is going to be what we're replacing today, looks more like this on top in comparison. You'll quickly notice the difference with Beagle Bone. It's got this big piece up there, basically. We'll call that the bone. There's also AM logic boards and things may change in the future, but the process has always remained the same. Replacing a control board is replacing a control board. And the S19 Bitcoin Miner series and all of the current generation altcoin miners like the M Miner K7, the M Miner L7, I mean, pretty much all of them, the Ethereum uh, miners like the E9 Pro or Ethereum Classic, they all pretty much run, there's a ton of overlap. The Xilinx board also goes on many Bitcoin miners and almost all of the altcoin mining rigs. The only board I don't have on hand to show you right now is the AM Logic, which you can see here. But again, the process is the process. So my drill bit too wide doesn't fit. Ha ha, sucks for me. So we're gonna go old school. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver. Normally you can pop this off if you push really hard, if you're having trouble with this screw. But otherwise you can just push it in and then you're just gonna pull it up carefully. Now that we've got the lid off, right, we've got the control board right here. And uh, it's, it's gonna be pretty simple. We're just going to unhook everything. Right, so I'm gonna take these ribbon cables and remember where everything's going, right? We see pretty clear positioning on these three, right? So I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna try to have them keep their form. Also, I'll take a picture before and I'll be able to trace these wires. Make sure we end up in the right spot there. Come down here. Should just be able to pull those out. One, two, three, four. Then we have the attached power supply cable, which you guessed it, we'll be unplugging that. We're gonna remove this little guy. And uh, I mean, pretty quick, we just removed all the cables. But why doesn't it come out? What's the trick to removing this control board? When we look at the control board, right, and we see that it has a little bit of play, and then we look at this rail, it bumps out right there on both sides. You see that little ledge, that little 
protrusion, okay? That's keeping the control board in. So we're gonna need to flip this thing around and remove these two screws here on the front and then it'll just slide out through the front. Now, just taking a screwdriver or drill, removing those screws, look, comes right off. It's actually zip tied to the fan power cable, which is that multicolored cable running up. And whoop, see you later, little guy. And so I'm just gonna write bad on this box and then uh, put that board in there. Now let's compare the control boards side by side. New one, we can see a few things we can decipher here like this 2023 date code. Comparatively, we have a 2022 date code on this miner. Notice general cleanliness. Uh, and some different components here, as well as this one is a control C71, and this is a C87. So now I'll just place the board here, slide it backwards. Looks like we're getting a little bit of resistance. And then we'll just start plugging and chugging. The good thing is these parts they have like a little bit of what's basically muscle memory, right? I mean, those are just sitting there right where I wanted them to be. Get that PCIe power supply connection in. And we got all these fan cables. You got to be careful. Never force anything because, I mean, look at the size of that metal. It's not much. Very easy to bend, and it's just gonna be a bad time for you. If you bend this, then you have to try to mess with it, bend it back, and if you are unsuccessful in that, well, then you're just gonna need to go out and buy yet, you guessed it, another control board. Here comes the final plug. I missed. So now everything's connected. What I'm gonna do, and I have to illustrate how serious this is. You probably shouldn't do this. I'm gonna plug this in and test it before I button it up, make sure it works so I don't have additional steps. This is a bus bar. This carries electrical current. This will hurt you. Please only have minor repairs done by a professional which I'll link out to a professional minor repair service in the video description below. This is, I'm not even kidding. This, 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 can, this can hurt you. Or at best case, it's just not gonna feel good. All right, that's the big disclaimer. I'm just gonna slide this over here. Make this a little neater. These things just slide right in where you would expect and want them to go. And uh, let's fire it up. I can only assume you know how to operate one of these if you're watching this video, but maybe you're doing a bunch of heavy research. Uh, so you can see on my app that a new miner popped up. Ignore all my terrible naming here on miners. So when you replace the control board, you're going to get a new IP address. So we got 168.5.157. Okay, I was remoted into this earlier. root root it's always the default login so this is good we have access now let's go to system and we're going to do a firmware upgrade we're going to install the latest firmware for whatever minor model that we have so we're going to go to bitmain we're going to go to oh, shouldn't have clicked that customer support firmware download and again, you're just gonna navigate to whatever minor model you have. There's nothing crazy you need to do. You download the file, you click the little upload icon, you select it, and then it uploads and it kind of handles the rest. I'm just gonna assume that you know how to use this minor if you're watching 
this video, right? You plug in the two C13 connections and you have a C20 normally power cable that goes into a PDU or you're using some kind of outlet that can support all this. These power supplies are only rated for 240 voltage or you know similar, not a 110 volt out, outlet, uh, right? We have an ethernet cable plugged in. Uh, that is the basic power up function. Remember, you're going to need to input new mining pool information when you swap control boards. There's no saving it because you're installing basically a new brain onto this miner. You put in your mining pool information after your firmware has been successfully installed. At this point, you could probably leave it, uh, but after I save uh, the mining pool information, then I just go ahead and click restart on the miner and then just give it a second. As we can see now, the miner is coming back online and uh, it's hashing again. And this is a successful repair, which is all you could ever ask for. When you throw a mining rig that's no longer working on your repair bench with the goal of repairing it. This is an easy process, right? At this point, I know that the miner is working. So what am I going to do? I'm going to power it down and then leave it alone for five minutes. They recommend at least three. Leave it alone for five minutes. So the power can kind of discharge from the bus bar and, and basically you're just not going to get any kind of shock. Uh, that's the goal here. So leave it alone for like five minutes. And at that point, then I will go and I will put the uh, case back on top. And all we're doing is we're just popping it on there, reinstalling the screws. First, we're going to do the screws in the front with that face blade that we took off that holds in the control board. Then we're going to put the hood on and uh, tighten that down. And this thing's ready to deploy back on the mining farm. So pro tip, uh, make sure you put the front piece on very loose, right? Because then you're going to be putting the hood on and the hood has to slide in in the front first, right? And, and that's because, yeah, see when you, when you tighten the front too much, this becomes really hard to remove. But basically that's another tip, I guess, is you leave the front kind of loose. The front slides into this. Uh, you put this in and then you push this down and uh, well, it's reinstalled Basically just do a quick check that you can remove this because you may need to replace another control board in the future one day Without making it a huge pain or stripping screws or whatever We've been talking a lot about Immersion mining lately here on the channel, but this is a miner that lives in an air-cooled environment This is a digital shovel mini pod uh, this has been a good experience overall. I did have to tighten the PDU, but this is a plug and play Bitcoin or altcoin, whatever, plug and play mining container. And uh, so this is where this thing has been for, you know, it's crazy about nine months. And then a bad thunderstorm came through, blew up the control board, got a new one in. Again, huge thanks and shout out to Altair for the help on that. And now it's time to, it's time to hash it out, baby. As always, I hope you enjoyed this content. If you found it helpful, informative, or just, you know, if you're still even here, just subscribe if you haven't. Click the thumbs up and share the video, please. You know, whether it's on, you know, some kind of Discord server, on social media, send it to your buddy. Honestly, just sending this video around, helping others get back in the mining game, and helping support the channel is all I could ever ask. And, I mean, come on. We got the CMO here. The Chief Mining Officer. Tails freaking Vosk. All right, the dogiest of doge coins. That's all I got. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. It is crazy that it was such a good temperature in the immersion shed. One air-cooled miner in there for like five or 10 minutes has completely hot boxed it. For reference, outside it's like a nice, you know, pr relatively cloudy 65 degrees. And now it's quickly approaching probably like 80 degrees in there. There's no airflow in there uh, right now and you know, whatever. It's kind of an aside. It, it, it's just interesting. Blooper, if you will.